Hey guys, this is Mike, and this is the fourth video in the LibGDX Box Studio and Tiled tutorial. So in this video we're going to talk about sensor fixtures and how to use those along with our custom contact listener here to try to make the player jump. So before we get started, uh, I'm going to do my own input handling, and if you've seen my Asteroids tutorial, you already know how I do it with the uh, key state arrays. So let's make a new class called my input. I'm gonna skim through this like I did with the first video, um, so you can follow along if you want. I'll try to explain a little bit. So I made a new class my input, and I put it in the handlers package. I'm gonna create two boolean arrays here. This one is for the current key state, and this one is for the previous key state. This previous one is the uh, the key state from the previous game loop. So the previous frame. Um, I'm also going to need some keys, number of keys. I'm only going to use two keys for this game, one for jumping and one for changing the color. So I'm just going to call them button 1 and button 2. And I'm going to set that to 0 and 1. So let's go ahead and initialize these uh, arrays. Keys is equal to new boolean, num keys. Same thing with P keys. And there we go. Okay, and we also need to update public static void update. This just sets the um, previous state of the keys to the current state. So we need to do that for all the keys. So a loop, i is less than num keys, i plus plus, uh, keys i is equal to p keys i. No, other way, p keys i is <laughs> equal to keys i. Previous state updating to the current state. Okay, so that's good. Let's update, and now let me move this down. The important methods that we need public, static, boolean, is down, int i. This uh, says that the current key, i is just the index here, either button 1 or button 2 is all we have right now. So this just says that the current key state is down, so this is um, return keys i. And we also need one for is pressed. And this one returns whether or not the key was just pressed. So return the current key is the current key state is down, and previously the previous key state was not down, so not p keys i. And we also need a way to set the keys state. So set key over here, int i, boolean d. And this is just keys i is equal to b. Alright, so that's my input for handling the key state. So we need one more. And this is, I'm just going to call this my input processor. <coughs> and implements input. No, 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 no. Um, I don't want to implement all the methods, so I'm going to do extends input adapter instead. So we don't have to override everything. Uh, import that and over here we're just going to override the public boolean key down int k return true public boolean key up int k return true let me just double check that I'm actually overriding the correct methods okay and override okay that's fine so key down and key up. Um, we're gonna use our my input class for this. So um, if the key is equal to keys dot uh, z, I'm gonna use z for button one. So I'm gonna do my input dot set key. I'm gonna use button one, and I'm gonna set that to true. And for button two, I'm gonna use keys dot x. You can change these if you want, by the way. I'm just going to use z and x, z to jump, x to change color. Set key, my input dot button 2 to true. And of course, key up is the exact opposite. Instead of true, it's false. So I'm just going to copy and paste and just change these to false. There we go. So that's my input and my input processor. That should be it for those two. So let's go back into the game here and actually use our custom input processor. So in create gdx.input.set input processor, do my input processor. There we go. 
So now the game is using our custom processor. And over here in the game loop, I have to update the key states. So my input dot update. Okay, let's see if this actually works. Let's go back into the play state. I'm done skimming through the code now, so. All right, uh, in update, we're gonna do handle input. That should be the first thing in every update, I think. And over here in handle input, we're just gonna test to see that the input actually works. Oh, what's this, ground ball? I'm gonna get rid of that. So back in contact listener, get rid of this print statement. It's getting in the way. So back in play, handle input. Let's do um if my input dot is pressed, let's do is pressed first. My input dot button one. So if I press Z, I should do press Z. And let's do the my input dot is down test. Let's do my input dot button two. So if I hold down X uh, hold X, I guess. All right, let's see if this works. So press Z, that works, and then hold X, that works too. So pressed, it only prints out every time I actually press it. If I hold it down, it still only gets printed out once. And hold, you know, it just goes crazy. So that's the difference between is pressed and is down. So let's put the console out of the way. Alright, now we can finally get started with sensor fixtures. So first of all, um, over here, the ball. We don't really need that ball anymore, so let's just get rid of it. So um, over here, let's get rid of all that. Boom. And uh, another thing we need to change, change the gravity back to normal, negative 9.81. And what else? Over here, the platform, we the bit mask for the platform. I don't need the ball part anymore, so get rid of that last part. Mask bits should only be bit box. And back in B2D vars, um, let's get rid of the ball category. And over here, the box, we're gonna replace this. Oh, by the way, to rename a variable, it's Shift Alt and R. So it should come out with this little box around this variable name, so you can rename it, press enter, and all references to this variable get changed. So bit player. So back in play, you'll see that everything here changed. Bit player got changed here, bit player. So that's cool. So um, over here, following box, we're not creating this box anymore. We're going to call this the player. And the user data, we're going to call this the player. So let's test it. It should just be the box falling down. That's fine. Um, let's go back up to the top and make a reference the player body. Uh, this is type body. Player, private body, player body. And over here where we create the player, we're going to set the player body to that. Player body is equal to world.createBody. And over here we're going to create fixture for the player body. Oops. Like that. So let's see if that works. Okay, that's fine. Now we're going to create foot sensor here. So let's first set shape as box. We're gonna make another fixture. Let's make this a little smaller than the player, two pixels. And um, fdef.shape, it's gonna be shape. I don't know if this is even necessary. I, it probably isn't. And I'm gonna copy the filter bit filtering as well. And I know these probably aren't necessary, but whatever. I'm making it clear once again, just to show you what I'm doing. So, uh, player body. We're gonna add, create a second fixture for the player using fdef, and we're gonna set the user data for this one to foot. So one player, one fixture for the player called player and a second fixture for the player called foot. Let's see what this looks like. There we go, so now we have two fixtures for the player body. One is the actual player itself, the smaller square is the foot, but it's inside the player, so we're gonna we're gonna move it down a little bit. So shape that set as box, um, I could use 
one of the other constructors, vector2 center and float angle. So new vector2, um, nothing in the x, and we're going to move it down a little bit, negative 5 pixels down, and then no angle change, so 0 for the angle. So let's see what that looks like. There we go. So now the foot sensor is down here on the player. And uh, last thing we need to do is fdef dot is sensor. Oops, is sensor is true. We're making this foot fixture a sensor. So you can see that the foot fixture is now going through the ground. Let me just explain quickly what sensor fixtures are first. First of all, we have over here our player, which is a regular fixture, and then we have over here a foot fixture, which is a sensor. Basically, a sensor is a sort of, um, it's kind of like a, a ghost fixture. It behaves like regular fixtures in that um, it still detects collisions, but it's a ghost fixture in that um, other fixtures pass through it. It doesn't do any colliding handling. So if you had like a platform here that was a sensor, the player would just go right through it. So that's pretty much what a sensor is. It's to make a fixture that other fixtures can travel through, so it's like a ghost fixture, but it still detects collisions. So, with that in mind, we have now our foot fixture, which is a sensor, and we gave it the user data foot. So back in contact listener, um, over here, we're going to first test to see whether or not uh, the fixture actually works. So if fa dot get user data does not equal null and fa dot get user data dot equals foot if this if the uh, fixture a is the foot then let me just test fa is foot and same thing with fb let's see if this actually works actually I'm not really sure if because get user data is an object and I'm using the string equals for it. Let's see. FB is foot. Yeah, FB is foot. Okay, so you can use equals even though it's a string object string thing. Anyway, so yeah. Um, like I said before, you have to figure out which fixture is which. So here I'm just checking both fixtures if they're foot. And since we already know in the previous video that uh, bit filtering only allows certain fixtures to collide with other fixtures. We know that the foot fixture can only collide with ground fixtures. So we know that anytime the foot fixture comes into contact with anything at all, that the player is on the ground. So what we're gonna do is uh, FA, we're gonna create a boolean up here called player can jump. Or, hmm, let's call it player is on ground. Or player on ground. Whatever. Anyway, so private boolean player on ground. We're gonna use this to figure out whether or not the player is actually on the ground. So public boolean player is player on ground. Um, return player on ground. Um, yeah, pretty much that. So this method returns whether or not the player is on the ground, and we're gonna set that over here. If the foot fixture is in contact with anything, any ground fixtures, then we're gonna do player on ground is equal to true, and we have to do that for both fixtures because I don't know which one's which. So if FA is the foot, or FB is the foot, then player on ground is true. Obviously an end contact going to be the opposite. The foot is no longer on the ground, so we have to do false here. So yeah, that's going to be our contact listener. Can you even see that? Let me move it down a little bit. So uh, yeah, begin contact, check which ones are the feet uh, fixture, and then set player on ground to true. End contact, set it to false. So let's test this out. Uh, player 
uh, the play state. Let's go to handle input. New player jump over here. So if my input dot is pressed, my input dot button one. If we press the Z button, we should have the player jump. But only if um, the player is on the ground is true. So let's go all the way back up to the top first, and we're going to create a reference to our contact listener. My contact listener, I'll just call it CL. And over here, um, we can just do where we set the contact listener for the world, CL is equal to that. Does that work? Uh, I think it works. It looks weird. Let me just do it manually here. My contact listener and then CL. So just create a new contact listener and then put, make the world set to that. Uh, so back in handle input, player can jump. Um, so I press the jump button, but first I have to check if CL dot is player on the ground. So if the player is on the ground, then I can jump. So what I'm going to do is I have the player body. I'm going to apply a force to the center an upward force, so nothing in the x-direction, and y, it's, this is in newtons by the way, so, ah, I'm not good with physics. Uh, right now the player body I think is one kilogram, and gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, so, I want the thing to jump up one meter. I have no idea what the calculations are for that, so I'm just going to put 100 here, 100 newtons of upward force. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the player seems to be jumping, but really short. That's funny. Anyway, uh, let's try 1,000. That's too much. Okay, that is way too much force. Where is it? Okay, there it is. Um, so I'm going to sort of play around with the force and the mass and the gravity and try to figure out what's a good force or what's a realistic force how much does a bunny weigh anyway like a couple of kilograms we'll see so there we go we have jumping using the foot uh, sensor fixture so just a small review again a sensor fixture is just a regular fixture except uh, other fixtures just travel right through it. It still detects collisions though, so you can think of it as a ghost fixture. Uh, so yeah, we use the ghost fixture to determine whether or not the player is on the ground using our custom contact listener. And so yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, when we jump, we first have to check if the foot fixture is actually colliding with anything. Then we may uh, make the player jump by applying a force to it upwards 200 newtons um, so yeah that's gonna be pretty much it for this video and uh, in the next video we're finally finally gonna get to using tiled and combining that with box 2d to make the uh, the box 2d world using the tiled map so yeah thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one